Well, good morning. Welcome to Church at Home at Glory Baptist Church. Thanks for taking a little bit of time to come and join us for worship today. Just a couple of quick things, and then we will get into our sermon. First, if you've not already done so and you would like to get signed up for online giving, uh, we have a couple of people who would love to help you do that. You can go to our church's website, top right-hand corner, give, if you'd like to give tithes and offerings. That's a great way to do it. You can also simply just continue to mail in checks or drop them off by the church, and uh, we do appreciate that. And uh, we are blessed, and we are thankful for all of your support in this season of of the stay-at-home orders and the shelter-in-place and not having church physically. But we are thankful that God has blessed us with the technology and the ability to bring worship to you. If you haven't already done so, like and share. Like our Facebook page. That really helps because it lets your friends see that you are seeing this. So if you would like Glory Baptist Church, that's helpful. Like and share our worship services. Uh, if you see something that you like, share that. Share it on your page. Share it with a friend. The more that we share it, the more that it gets shared. The way Facebook works is if you share it with somebody, they are more likely to show it and see it um, through that. Um, other people can see it. That Even if your friend doesn't watch it, they still will have other people in their Facebook feed who can see it. And this isn't anything about getting more people to, to watch me. It's not about me. It's about the good news of Jesus Christ, and we want to share that with as many people as possible. And so, like and share. Uh, feel free to leave comments below. Participate. Be active as the service is going on. There's other people watching with you, and, and it's more fun, frankly, to be doing this together. I really wish I was with you right now. I can't be with you, but uh, uh, this is the best I can do. Today, you can see. All of these things are from our students. I'm in the youth room. If you're not familiar with this wall... Uh, this is some of the different things our students have put up on the wall, giving praise and giving thanks and, and, and other things. It talks about gratitude right here and that they're going to choose joy. And if uh, you haven't heard the story, Pastor Kevin could tell it much better than I, but this was supposed to be a little short-term thing that turned out to be a long-term thing. It was a little thing that became a big thing. Keep that in mind because we're going to keep talking about that subject here in a little bit. But anyhow, these are some of the really awesome things that our students have put up on the wall here. And uh, I praise God that we have a great church, that we have people who love Jesus and who are willing to invest in a student ministry. A uh, pastor like Pastor Kevin, who continually preaches the gospel. You can see his Sunday message for Sunday school and his Wednesday message. And he keeps producing great content there. It's not just for the kids. I mean, yes, he's talking to the kids, but... If you're an adult watching this, you'd probably benefit from that too. So we've got that. We've got Wednesday evening programming materials for our student ministries as well, for our younger kids. We have different uh, video programs and have been posting the parent cues and other things there uh, here on Facebook. So if you haven't plugged into that, uh, our kids' ministry still continues to run. It's just we're doing that digitally and we're trying to equip you as families and parents with the resources to continue to help your students grow in faith. So that's uh, my little spiel for that. We have bulletins, of course. They're, they're online. You can go to the church's website, download this, or print this out, or look at it on your phone while you watch this on your TV, and there's information there for you. Um, of course, it's Mother's Day, and uh, we are so so blessed by, by you ladies, just truly astonished in an abundance of your great love. Not a single one of us hasn't been changed because of some amazing woman in their life. And, and Mother's Day transcends biological mothers, of course. So many women have made such a difference in my life. School teachers, Sunday school teachers, friends, grandmothers, aunts, cousins, um, women in my church that I've, I've had the opportunity to learn from and minister with. There's just so many amazing women. And, and truly, ladies, um, we love you. We thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Even if you don't have biological children, we are still blessed by you, and we are so thankful to have had you in our lives. Again, thank you to all of you ladies for the just over-the-top amazing things that you all do that, that makes life work, because without you, if it was just us guys, the world would be a disaster. Let's be honest. I can't even imagine, I don't want to imagine what the world would be like without moms and other women in my life. So, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day. We're so glad you're in our lives. And uh, we're, we're, we're truly blessed by you ladies. So again, thank you. Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. And today happens to coincide with my wife's birthday as well. So it's kind of a double whammy. 
So happy birthday to my wife, Kimberly, as well. Well, with that, would encourage you, download um, and, and look at the bulletin so you know what's in there. It's got our sermon notes. It's got the call to prayer, um, the different things that you can pray for throughout the week. Uh, uh, Ruth and, and Trish do a great job of making sure that stays up to date with various things that you can be in prayer for. Um, continue to pray for the COVID-19 crisis. Continue to pray for families impacted by that, both as a health concern, but as well as a financial concern. Uh, so much going on in the world right now. So much um, that's unknown. And um, we are a people who live by faith and not by fear as Christians. But that doesn't mean there's not some discombobulation going on. And um, so we want to be in prayer for that. Continue to pray for our leaders. This has nothing to do with politics, but has to do with the need for them to have our prayer. Because right now, leading is hard. I assure you of that. There are very difficult choices being made. And every single one of them have big impact-making uh, opportunities. And boy, there's a weight on every leader. Whether it's a weight on, on me as a pastor, or Al Pearson as our church leader, or, or our mayor here in town, or the, 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 the sheriff, or our governor, or our president, all of it right now. Leadership has kind of been put in the pressure cooker. So please keep praying for your leaders. Pray for our men and women who are in the armed services, both domestic and globally. Pray for their protection and that they continue to serve so well and give us the freedom to do things like this where we can praise Jesus and not have to worry about it and, and do so very publicly. So we are thankful for that. Um, pray for the Zacharias family. Raleigh Zacharias passed away this week from a heart attack. And as you know, um, they've had a long ordeal with, with health concerns, with other family members. And, and this, of course, was very unexpected. And so um, a real, uh, real need of prayer there. Continue to pray for the Flowers family as they lost Sonny a number of weeks ago. Pray for Marianne Pearson's family as she passed away a few weeks ago. Lots of things to pray for, especially as people are losing, you know, people. It's really an awkward time right now. Can't do funerals, can't mourn like we're used to. It's really thrown that whole thing of, of funerals and visitation and all that uh, just in, into a tizzy, so to speak, and uh, makes it hard for us to really experientially go through the process of mourning that we are used to as Americans. And so... Pray for those who mourn. That is a very biblical thing. Well, with that, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to read some passages of Scripture, and we're going to hop into the sermon. So join me for a moment of prayer. God, you are truly good, and we are absolutely thankful for your great and amazing and abundant, unending love. We thank you for your son, Jesus, and we're continually reminded of your great love for us through him, that he came to live a life we could not live and die a death we could not die, that uh, he came to redeem the world, not condemn the world. He came to bring us freedom. That, Lord, if we would put our hope and trust in him, that truly, if, if he would be our Lord and Savior of our lives, if we would call on him for our eternal lives, that, that we fully could inherit, uh, fully as fully engrafted family members into your family, we will inherit um, all that you had in store for him. And so, God, we are thankful for that. Thankful for your blessing. For many of us, you've poured it out so abundantly. And God, we pray that we would not be the stopping point of your grace, but that we would be funnels of your grace, that as you pour into us, we would find ways to funnel that into great places, to do great things, leveraging all that you've given us, our time, our treasure, our talents, to do good in this world for your glory, to spread your name and your fame to the ends of the earth. So God, thank you for that. Thank you for every opportunity you give us to make much of you. And this week, God, I pray that truly you would put in our path a, a chance to make a difference for your glory. God, we lift up to you all the prayer concerns, physical, emotional, spiritual, all the problems of this world. They're not, not the way you wanted things to be in this world, Lord. Sin has entered in and it has broken it. But, God, we know that you are good and we have hope. And we look forward to a time where you will take all of that away and we'll be rejoined together and lifted up and brought up and, and be able to rejoice fully without weeping without tears, without pain or sorrow or suffering. And God, until then, Lord, sustain us, strengthen us. God, we thank you for your provision. We thank you for your love. And God, where we can make a difference in this world and other people's lives, please show us and enable us to do so. Continue to be with us in this time as we worship. It is through the power of your Holy Spirit from Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 
Well, our key passage today comes from Ephesians 4.29, but I'm going to read for you Ephesians 4.17-29. through 29. There it says, Now this I say, and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their mind. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance that is in them, due to the hardness of their hearts. They have become callous, and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice of every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned in Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Here's our key verse, verse 29. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as it fits the occasion that it might give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. This is God's Word. Well, today we are in part three of a four-part message series called It's the Little Things. And I just want to say as we enter into this message that I honestly believe that as we look at some things that you might call really small principles, that, that some of you, if you would apply these to your life, that you'll look back at your life years from now and, and see a tremendous difference because of what God does in your life today. And I honestly believe that, that it is absolutely and completely a very real possibility that when you make some little changes, that you can see that they will make a big difference. In fact, that is our, our key thought for this message series. So often, you look at people who, who, who have things that you don't have, they've, they've accomplished things that you haven't, and you wonder, what, what are the big things that they are doing that I'm not doing? And our key thought for this series, if you're taking notes, is this. It's, always not, or it's not always the big things. In fact, it's rarely the big things. But it's often the little things that no one sees that result in the big things that everyone wants. Let me say it again because this is such an important principle. We have to understand that it is often those small things in our lives that no one else sees that make all of the difference in the things that everyone else wants. So today, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about the power of your words. The Bible speaks about words quite a bit. It says things like, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, right? And, and, and then it says things like, and the word became flesh. And, and whenever God created in his creative acts as he created the world, he did it with the spoken word. Now, obviously, you and I, we're not God. I'm sorry if that's a revelation to you this morning, but we are not God, and it's a good thing because we'd make terrible gods, frankly. But our words are still incredibly powerful nonetheless. In fact, Solomon, who is known as the wisest man to ever have lived in this world, said this about our words in Proverbs 18.21. He warns that our tongue has massive power. And he said this, the tongue has the power of life and death. Think about that, life and death, in, in, in just that, that little thing there. In other words, the words that we speak can be life-giving, or the words that we speak can be life-taking words. In fact, uh, if you want to jot down just a couple of things in your notes, this would be really important. If you want to change the life that you have, you need to change the words that you speak. Now, I'm pretty sure I heard an amen from a couple of living rooms right now. Well, okay, maybe not. But if you want to change the life that you have, you need to change the words that you speak because it is about the little things. 
in the words that we speak, little changes can make a big difference in the life that we live. In fact, James uh, said this a long, long time ago. James, of course, was, was the brother of Jesus, right? And some, some scholars believe that, that, that James is the very best evidence of the divinity of Christ. Now, now, how is that? Well, imagine this. What would it take for your brother or your sister to be convinced that you are God, right? Think about that for just a second. And if James, the brother of Jesus, thought that Jesus was the Son of God, I think that's pretty good evidence, because I attest my brother would tell you I am not God. Now, anyhow, this brother, James, this is what James says in James 3, 3 through 5. He talked about how the small things can make a big difference. He said, we can make a large horse go wherever we want by the means of this small little bit that we put in its mouth, right? And it's this small little bit that we can use to move the horse because something little can make a big difference. And then he talks about a, a big ship on the sea, right? And he says, what size of rudder changes the direction of that sea? Well, relative to the size of the ship, it's a very small rudder that makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot wants it to go, even when the winds are strong. So little things can make a big difference. And then he continued on in this line of thinking, uh, talking about the power of our words, the, the power of our tongue. And, and James said this, he said, in the same way, the tongue is a small thing that can make grand speeches. So in other words, a, a well-crafted speech can, can move a crowd to do massively good things, right? But the flip side of this is true as well. And this is, but a, a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. There is the power of life and death in our words. And you can speak life-giving words or life-taking words. You take somebody that you don't like having around, right? And, um, you, you can say things that make the situation worse or make the situation better. Or, or on the flip side, imagine experiences you may have had where where you've been around somebody who made you feel small, made you feel unimportant, right? Maybe you've had a boss that just drove you crazy. And, and, and what you'll find in those situations is an abundance of life-taking words. Now, of course, on the other hand, there's, there's something about being around someone that, that you love to be around, right? People who like to build you up, people who are encouragers, people who, who breathe that life-giving word into your life, and you know if you've experienced those people before, what, what a fresh breath of, of life they are into your life, right? And so many of us have experienced those differences. And in fact, Solomon, the wisest man, as I said, who ever lived, he, he contrasted many different times the difference between life-giving and life-taking words. Let's look at another scripture here, Proverbs 12, 18. He said, the words of the reckless Pierce like a sword. Now, my guess is, if you're hearing my voice right now, you've experienced this personally, that you have been pierced before by life-taking words. But then it says, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. It's life-giving. And, and in my experience, and I suspect yours is similar, that when somebody gives you the proper word at just the right time, you're like, oh, that's what I needed, right? Maybe I was struggling and, and somebody came and, and they said the right thing and, and it lifted me up and it helped me see that I can make it through this, right? Or, or I can endure this or, or whatever it might be. And their words can be incredibly life-giving. So you know that's true. And then he says in Proverbs 15, 4, he says, the soothing tongue is a tree of life. So again, it's life-giving. But on the other hand, it says, a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Now, I don't know about you, but many people have experienced that, right? You've had your, your, your spirit crushed by life-taking words. I guarantee almost every one of us has. At some point in time, somebody maybe even saying something that they didn't intend the way we took it, 
Maybe it was just a meaningful, meaningless kind of throwaway comment on their part, but we heard it, and it hurt, right? And it can be something as simple as like, did you mean to do that to your hair, right? Now you're thinking, dude, I just spent a bunch of money on that haircut, and I thought it looked good. And now they're saying, did I mean to do that? What do you mean? Well, did I mean to do that? I mean, yeah, I did. Now I'm beginning to second-guess my choice, right? And, and sometimes even just little offhand comments like that can, can really be life-taking. You know, somebody might just go, hey, you know, why aren't you married at your age? Wow. You know, they may, may, may not have meant that to be a painful statement, but it could be incredibly hurtful, right? And you're just like, all right, shut up. and Get out of my face now. Leave me alone, Right? And so sometimes it's very unintended, but other times it can be much more pointed and we can really be harmful with the things that we say. And sometimes it's very intentional. Sometimes we say things like, I can't stand you, right? Or you're pathetic. Or I, I wish I never had you, right? I wish you weren't in my life. And you hear those words, life-taking words, they, they pierce like a sword, crushing the Spirit. But on the other hand, many of us have been blessed by life-giving words, right? Somebody, somebody comes up and goes, man, I'm so proud of you. You're, you're, you're one of the best, right? Or, I'd marry you all over again. Or, you're my dream come true. Or, or I'm, I'm just so thankful that God puts you in my life. And that just builds you up, Right? There's something about life-giving words. It's healing to the soul. And I'll be the first to admit, I am not the best at this. But I'm growing. I'm trying to get better. I, I try to do it like with my son every day, right? Uh, my son, fun kid. He, he, and, I, and, and, and I love to remind him that he is my best buddy ever, right? And so, yeah, you're my best buddy ever. And then he'll often remind me that I'm his best daddy ever, right? And then we'll go back and forth. No, you're my best buddy. No, you're my best daddy. No, you're my best buddy. You, you, you get it, right? And, and, and I, but we do this, and I want to do this, and I want to be intentional about doing this because I, I want to build him up. I want to I give him life with my words. So, so what I want to do, to, do today, if, if you're willing, you know, is kind of something we've done last week even, is uh, if you've got your notes there, if you printed out a bulletin, or maybe you just got a sheet of paper, or if not, just do this here mentally. If, uh, if you're watching this and you're in Aiken like I was today, and it was snowing here today on May 9th, um, you can breathe on the window and probably draw it in, the, in your breath on the window. It's been so cold out lately. But, but either way, if you would make a line and put one at one end and a 10 at the other end, right? And, and just think about, as I speak here, where would you put yourself on that scale if, if one is life-taking words and, and ten is life-giving words, right? Think about the words that you speak, the words that you speak to others and the words that you also speak to yourself. And so maybe there'll be two different lines. The first one, the words that you speak to others. Are they, are they life-taking down at the one, maybe a two, three, four, five, or are they life-giving, right? Are, 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 you the, are you that life-taking word person? I, I just can't stand you. Why do you always do this? What's wrong with you? You're pathetic. You're driving me crazy. You drive me nuts. Oh, I can't, I can't stand this. You know, you, you got that, whatever it is. If you're, if you're that kind of person, you're going to be a one, two, three, or four probably, right? On the other hand, if you're a, a life-giving person, I'm so proud of you. You're the best husband. I, I thank God for you every day. Man, that was an incredible meal. You are wonderful. If you're that, that kind of person, seven, eight, nine, maybe even a ten, right? So how do you speak into others' lives? Life-taking or life-giving? And then let's talk about our own words to ourself, right? Are the words that that you speak to yourself more life-taking or life-giving. Think about the things you, you, when you think to yourself, when you speak to yourself. Most of us don't speak out loud to ourselves because then, you know, people look at you a little weird when you do that. But, but, you know, that inner dialogue that you have going with yourself, it's a monologue, but 
we like to pretend it's a dialogue, right? And, and do you say more life-taking or life-giving things? You know, oh man, my life's always going to be bad. Oh, this is going to be a tough day. Oh gosh, I'm so tired again. Things never work out for me. Oh, I never get the breaks, right? Now, if that's you, you get a lower number. One, two, three, four, five at the best. If, on the other hand, if you're, you're one of those people that's like, oh, yeah, God is with me, right? God, God is going to bless me. I am so thankful for this day. We're going to nail it, right? This is going to be great. With Christ, I can do all things who gives me strength. If you're that person, 7, 8, 9, 10, maybe, right? Put it in a higher number. And how many of you speak more life-giving words to others than you do to yourself? I'm just curious. How many times are you more life-giving to others than to yourself? But either way, put, put down a number, or at least think of a number. And if you didn't put a 10 down on both of those, the good news is you're human just like me. None of us are 10 out of 10 all the time, right? So if that's the case, if we are not all 10s, if we all don't get this perfect, if we all don't say all the right words at all the right times every single time, that means there's some room for improvement for each and every one of us. And we should want to improve. Why? Because there is power in our words. If you want to change the life you have, change the words that you speak and you make some small changes in the words that you speak, it will make a big difference in the life that you have. Our words have the power of life, and our words have the power of death. So let me give you two powerful rules about life-giving words. The first one is this, if you're taking notes. Now, I'm going to sound just like your mama. I understand that, and that's okay. I'm not going to apologize for it because it is Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day, all your moms. And I'm going to quote every single mom, every single one of us had. And every single mom in the world, I think, has probably said this, and it doesn't matter what language they said it in. They said it in some way, shape, or form. They said, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all, right? If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Skip it. The Apostle Paul said it this way in our key verse for today. Ephesians 4.29, he said, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only the kind of talk that is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Man, if that doesn't convict us, then I don't think you're paying attention, frankly, right? Do not let anything unwholesome come from your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up others. Now, some of us, if we just applied this one verse to our lives, our, 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 our workplaces, our marriages, our parenting, um, our, our friendships, uh, everything would, 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 would be transformed if we would just apply that, that one short, simple, single Bible verse, right? And if, if you get nothing else out of this whole sermon and service today, hear those words. Hear those words clearly. Do not let anything unwholesome come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up others. Now, if you're sitting on the couch, do not elbow your spouse. That's not fair. Okay? No elbowing. But we need to hear this, don't we? Right? We do. We need to hear this. If you can't say something helpful, skip it. Close it. Bite it. Zip it. Don't say anything at all. Very simple, very direct. The second rule, and I want to spend a little bit more time here because I think this is really important. Number two, if you're taking notes, is this. If you think something good, say it. If you think something good, say it, right? This is a, a great rule to apply and live out any time that, that you think of something good. And I try to do this, but I'm not always the best about this. But, but if you think of something good about somebody else, if you think about something good about God, if you think about somebody in your life, uh, your, your wife, or a circumstance that you may be in, if, if you want to give it life, do so by saying something about it. In fact, Proverbs 16.24 says this. It says that gracious words are like a honeycomb. They are sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Now notice, Solomon didn't say that 
that, that gracious thoughts are like honeycomb, right? What did he say? He said gracious words, right? Not thoughts. See, I can have a, a great thought about you, but it doesn't do you any good if I don't say anything about it. I might be sitting there with kind of that, that dumb look on my face, looking off into the distance, thinking wonderful things about you, and you're just looking at me thinking I'm probably having a stroke or something, right? No. I've got to verbalize it. I've got to say it. I've got to spit it out, right? And you're looking at me going like, what are you doing? And I'm sitting there going, I'm thinking great things about you, and you're not feeling good about it at all because you don't know. If I don't say it, it doesn't mean anything. But if I set it free, then the words have power to give life and to bless. Words are so powerful, right? So when you think about something good, send a text. Post a comment on Facebook. Pick up the phone and call them. Write them a letter. Send them an email. Say to them, some way, shape, or form, a note verbally, something. Get it to the person you're thinking that good thought about every single time. Make it a rule in your life. Every time you think something good, say it. Make it a rule. Don't ever hold back a chance to be a blessing to someone else. Why rob anyone of a blessing that could potentially give them life through your words? So every time you think it, Say it. And not just to other people, but say it to yourself as well. I mean, think about it. Look at your word audit. How are you on that list? Are you a one, a two, a eight, nine, ten? Where do you fall on that? Many of us would look at that list and probably say, yeah, I'm pretty self-critical, right? I, I, I say, I, I say a, a lot of negative things to myself. I say a lot of things that are, are life-taking words that, that kind of beat myself down. And my question is, why would you ever be cruel to yourself? Why? Speak life-giving to yourself as well. David, right? King David from the Bible in the Old Testament. I love looking at his story. One time when he was worried that he was going to be stoned, he, he spoke some life-giving words to himself. In fact, the text said that, that David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. I love that. He encouraged himself, right? And every now and then, I have to do that to myself as well. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just need to, need to, need to tell myself that, that, that God is for me and not against me, right? That God is in this with me. That, that, so in those moments, I'll just pray, God Give me the faith for this. God, I believe your hand is upon me. God, I believe that you are working in all things to, to bring about good because I love you and I am called according to your purposes, right? I think we can do that. I think we can build ourselves up. And every now and then, you have to speak life to yourself and encourage yourself with words of life and affirmation, encouraging yourself. Not just that you can do it, but that God can do it through you. Encourage yourself in the things of the Lord. Because it's the small things that no one sees that result in the big things that everyone wants. And if you want to change the life that you have, start by changing the words that you use. Because words are powerful. They have the power of life and death. And if we can get away from speaking life-taking words from others and begin to speak life-giving words to others, if we can choose to actively build them up, if we can be an encourager instead of a discourager, if we can build others up and point them to Jesus as we do it, we ourselves will grow and they will grow as well. If we think of something not good to say, Skip it, right? Now, I'm not saying, I mean, there's times where we have to have hard conversations with people. The Bible talks about that too. That's not what I'm talking about. But there's times where we're just judgmental, we're critical, where we're snarky, where all those things come out of us. And it's never 
the goodness coming out of us, right? We might sound clever. We might win an argument. But did we really help that person? Did we really build that person up? Did we speak life into them? Are they better because of what we said? So this week, I want you to think about your words. For some of us, that's going to mean swallowing an awful lot of what we might normally say and want to say. So we're going to have to bite off some of those words and not say them. And at the same time, every time we think of something good, every time we think of something positive, whether it's something good about God or good about others, let's begin to verbalize that. Let's begin to choose to be a blessing with the words that we say. We're not going to let any unwholesome talk come out of our mouths, but only what is helpful for the building up of others according to their need, that it may benefit those who listen. And if we each and every one of us do that, if we start with just a small circle of people here at Glory Baptist Church and then the people who are watching this online and then whomever else that might hear that, if we begin to one by one make that change in our lives and begin to have an impact on just one other person, it can grow exponentially and we can change the world for the glory of God. We have power in our words. And let us use our words to glorify God to improve our relationships, and to make us more like Christ. Because that is who we are called to be, and that is who we want to be. Use your words wisely. Be a blessing. Build others up. That's what I want you to do. That's your homework for this week. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you again today that even a, a small truth as as small as just watch your words, can have such a huge impact on our relationship with you, our relationship with ourselves, our relationships with others. It can change marriages. It can change friendships. It can change enemies into friends, Lord. It can have such an impact on this world. And God, I just pray this week that you would help us move our life forward, that you would help us to become more who you want us to be. And God, as we do that, may we choose our words wisely, May you show us places where we just need to swallow our pride and bite those words and not share them. And then God also, enlighten our hearts and encourage us to share those words that bring life to others. And then God, as we do that, may we point to you and give you all the glory for this transformation in our lives. And, and, and Lord, as we do that, may, we, may it improve our ability to be our ambassadors, that we, we, through our words, might be able to love others better as you have loved us. And then in that, God, may it change us, change the world around us, and transform the world to your glory. Lord, that is our prayer. God, again, we are so thankful for the chance to, to gather digitally here on this Sunday morning, and we look forward, Lord, to once again someday gathering personally. But until that day comes, Lord, may we find ways to make much of you wherever we might be. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. It is in the beautiful name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, once again, we are so thankful that you've taken a little bit of time out of your weekend to hang out with us here at Glory Baptist Church. And if we can love you, serve you, pray for you, bless you in some way, please let us know. You can leave a comment. You can contact us online. You can give us a call. And if we can do it, to the best of our abilities, we will. And uh, we enjoy that. God has blessed us. We want to be a blessing to others. So thanks again for stopping by. Join us every week at 1030. Go forth and serve your king. Wash your hands fre frequently. Make much of Jesus always. And stay awesome. We love you. Bye. <laughs>